Oh my God, is it cold today? In Bulgaria, we have this thing called Baba Marta, where every single year around the months of March and April, the weather just goes completely crazy. Like one day it's sunny, other day it's snowing, then you have thunder, then you have wind, like it's every single weather imaginable. And right now, it's just pouring it down. But that's not the purpose of this video. Today, I am here because I wanted to um, create a new style of video, something I've never done before. Uh, because I feel like I need more dentistry stuff on this channel. So today I'm going to be explaining uh, something that we recently did in prosthetics, uh, which is we created our first ever partial denture, which we were all obviously really excited about. So um, I wanted uh, to just create a video explaining the steps that we took, uh, mistakes I made and things that I learned in order to help out you guys um, watching online. So let's get into step number one. The first thing we did is we obtained plaster models of the uh, actual teeth, just like these ones. So that is called gypsum plaster right over there. Okay, so once we got the plaster models, what we did is we cut um, the teeth that we were supposed to uh, create for our denture off. Obviously, in a real person, those teeth would not exist from the beginning, but in our case, we had to cut them off. So after we cut them off, the next step to do was to create clasps. There are different types of clasps for different types of teeth. So uh, some of the most common clasps or the one that we had to create is our single arm clasp. As you can see over here, this is embedded in wax so you can't really see it properly. Yeah, but we killed it at trial. Yeah, that happen now when you're the end of it. I know. God forbid they have to put one all nighter, let alone two. It's like then we also created the Jackson clasp, this one right over here, and we also created the double armed clasp right over there. The whole purpose of these clasps is to prevent the denture from separating from uh, your actual teeth. The next step we did uh, for the maxillary um denture which is the only one that we actually flasked because we didn't really need the mandibular one anyway for the maxillary uh partial denture we put a base plate onto the actual um gypsum and shaped it properly around following certain rules that um, we need to learn in dentistry uh, so make sure you know your theory before you do this okay so after placing the base plate onto the uh, actual gypsum plaster uh, what we did next is we created the wax rims. The wax rims are basically um, just bits of wax that go above the base plate um, in that sort of manner where you will obviously eventually place your actual um, acrylic teeth. The next step we did is to create retention lines on the back side of uh, the maxillary and mandibular and we use that to create an occludator. Why is an occludator? An occludator is literally just this piece of metal which represents your, your jaw. This is the maxillary and this is the mandible. Right over there, as you can see, that would be the ramus of the mandible and that is the base of the mandible. The one that I've created here is literally just for showing you guys, but in reality, you would have the wax rims on there and you would probably create them. Then we connected the wax rims together um, and finally, we separated the wax rims and then you could open this up and the wax rims are already at the right places. And then we begin with one of the most important and most difficult aspects of creating a denture, tooth placement. So after we finished creating the actual occludator along with the wax rims, what we had to do in tooth placing was very, very difficult. And this is where I made my first mistake. My mistake was that I didn't learn the, pr the theory properly and this affected me a loads because I am one of those people that likes to actually just do the work without actually thinking about it, which is not really good. You should not be doing that. Make sure you actually know the theory before you go in. It saves you so much time and it will literally make your uh, denture look so much better. So when it comes to teeth placement, some of the really important rules that we needed to learn were that the uh, maxillary central incisors touch the glass plate, the lateral incisors 
um, are supposed to be one millimeter above the glass plate and then the canines touch the glass plate and then the vestibular cusp of the first premolar is supposed to touch the glass plate whereas uh, the second premolar both of the cusps are supposed to touch the glass plate the height of the first premolar is supposed to be the same as the canine and just things like that <coughs> that um, you need to learn so make sure you know the theory before you start actual tooth placement it will literally save your life it will save you so much time and your denture will look so much better once you are done with uh, with the tooth placement you will get something that looks really similar to this but you will get it on both sides mandibular and the top maxillary so it will look something like this when it's done and you'll have nice fitting teeth uh, but obviously you still have the top gypsum power on it and then the next step to do this is also the t the step that takes the longest after teeth placement flasking once we were done with tooth placement now we had to flask um, our partial dentures and how you do this is we use gypsum plaster inside the actual flask place it into it and then the other side and it's a whole process which takes so long the whole purpose of it is to replace the pink wax with pink acrylic at the end and that is how you get your final denture but when it comes out of the gypsum it does not look like this when it comes out it's covered in gypsum it looks so bad you're gonna think that you messed up but don't worry because later on you smooth it out you trim it down a little bit you take the uh, gypsum plaster off and it just looks really nice at the end and it comes out just as shiny as this Now, when it comes to the mistakes that I made, the one main mistake I made is not learning the theory properly. I can't stress this enough. Make sure you know the theory before you attempt to make any sort of dentures. It will help you out so much. As soon as I started learning theory, everything was just going so much more smoother and it was just working out. And because I didn't learn the theory properly, right now this looks fine and when you occlude it, it does look fine as well as you can see here but the problem arises is when I put this onto a glass plate then I realize that I have so many mistakes in this because for example your uh, first molar the mesolingual cusp is the only cusp that's supposed to be touching the glass plate whereas with mine it's literally the vestibular cusp so I don't know why I was, I was doing that now when it comes to things that I learned from making my first ever partial denture. One really important thing is um, the smoothening of the palate, this part. That took me ages to get to, but finally understood how to do it. There are two ways that you can take when trying to smoothen out. Number one, you can do what I did, which is you just put loads of little pieces in, melt them together, and then try your best to smoothen them out. But that is the long way, do not do that. Uh, but if you do do that, this is what I did. Um, you heat the middle part or the palate, until it's almost liquid and then use your thumbs by pressing on it until it's like fully smooth and then you can use like the back side of a knife or something like that to make it completely smooth and like ready or you can do um, another method which is uh, you just get a big strip of wax and just place it right in the middle uh, make it slightly hot so it's flexible and then just push it down and it should be perfect and smooth and just ready from the get-go I think that the second option is probably the better option and will save you so much time. Another thing I learned is when it comes to occlusion, um, what I need to do is set one of the dental arches, for example, um, for full dentures at least, set the entire maxillary arch and then close the occludator, put the knife in from the back and then move the other, uh, the teeth of the other dental arch from the back because then you just get the perfect occlusion straight away and that saves you so much time rather than trying to you know just move a knife check it move a knife check it move a knife it, that takes so long and you just waste so much time so keep that in mind tip for, for, for you guys when you're coming up and you're doing dentures now one thing our teacher made us do which was uh, really interesting is he made us he, he pretty much told us that this was wrong but he still made us do it he said to make the palate 
much thicker than we actually needed. Like when I created this uh, partial denture, the palette was about that thick. And then he made us trim it all down with burrs. And we asked him why he did that to us. Why would he just make us waste time? <laughs> and he said it was to teach us a lesson. And I fully agree with him and I understand his lesson now. He wanted to teach us that it's much easier for you to fix your mistakes in the wax stage rather than, rather than leaving them to work and try to fix them in the burr stage. Once the acrylic is formed, it's so much harder to work on it. And the amount of noise that this makes will literally make you deaf. It is so loud. So. Um, that really taught me that if there are any mistakes, fix them in the wax stage. Do not leave them until the acrylic stage. So by the time you get there, it's perfect. All you need to do is maybe smooth it out a little bit and just polish it and you should be ready to go. So that is everything for today, guys. I hope you did enjoy this new style of video. Uh, if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up right down there. Uh, leave me a comment if you have any tips for making dentures of your own, if you are a dentist or if you are a student. Um, my name is Future Dentist Saad uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video.